Thirdly is the kingly office. According to the scriptures, Christ is the king of the kingdom of God. The Old Testament expected the Messiah to be king over Israel. Jeremiah 23, verses 5 through 6. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will raise up to David a righteous branch, a king who will reign wisely and do what is just and right in the land. In his days Judah will be saved and Israel will live in safety. This is the name by which it will be called, the Lord our righteousness. Again, Daniel chapter 7 verses 13 through 14. In my vision at night I looked and there before me was one like a son of man coming with the clouds of heaven. He approached the Ancient of Days and was led into his presence. The Ancient of Days is a prototype, a typology of Christ. And in some icons, you will see God depicted with a young face and a long white beard. It is not God. It is Christ as the Ancient of Days in this reference to Daniel. And you, uh, you'll see it on, on some of the churches on Mount Athos. So the Ancient of Days is a revelation of Jesus Christ, and he's depicted with his long white beard because he's from the beginning with God. But he's still the Son of God. So he's called, referred to as the Ancient of Days. He was given authority, glory, and sovereign power. All peoples, nations, and men of every language will worship him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that will not pass away, and his kingdom is one that will never be destroyed. Again, Daniel, chapter 7, verses 13 through 14. Again, the same Daniel, who was the, the leader of this group of wise men, or intellectual priests, that the wise men were descended from. Luke 1, 31 through 33. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will have no end. Again, the kingly office of Jesus Christ. Revelation, the book of the ap Apocalypse, chapter 19, verse 16 and chapter 11, calls him the king of of ages. Pilate questions and calls him the king of the Jews. He is king. He is the king of truth and the nature of his kingship is spiritual, not worldly. In response to Pilate's question, Jesus answered, my kingship is not of this world. If my kingship were of this world, my servants would fight that I not, might not be handed over to the, to the Jews, but my kingship is not of this world. Pilate said to him, so you are a king? Jesus answered, you say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. Whoever is seeking the truth will hear the truth of Jesus Christ. The kingdom which Jesus teaches is not of this world. In his presence, the kingdom of heaven is among us, and it is within us. Remember Jesus in Luke chapter 17, verse 21. The kingdom of heaven is within you. He also says that kingdom is taken by force or by violence. And what he's talking about there is that we have to penetrate deep within us and battle our shortcomings, our sins, our, our those hard parts of ourselves that keep us away from God. The kingdom of heaven is within you, and here is where the battleground is. It's not out there. We like to look at all the problems of the world and put the blame out there, but ultimately, the battleground is in here. Because that can only influence us based on what's going on in here. He manifested his kingdom in miracles. He cast out demons. He raised the dead. He became the Lord over the physical limitations of suffering humanity. Christ descends into Hades. 
his kingship is even there. He goes to the place of the dead, to Sheol, and Christ's kingship is there. His kingship is in paradise, the place for those in communion with God. The Christian church has always believed in Christ's descent into this Hades. For this is why the gospel was preached even to the dead, that though judged in the flesh like men, that they may live in the spirit like God. In other words, Christ as king descends into the realm of the dead to offer salvation to those in Sheol, in Adis, in Hades. And he doesn't come in as this meek, little, broken man. He enters in as God and overturns the dwelling place of the dead. His kingship is expressed in the cross. It is part of his victory, his triumph, and his kingship overall. And as I said, he enters into Hades as a king to destroy him who has the power of death that is even the devil. To destroy the power of death and to free his people from death and give them the new life. The descent into Hades completes his incarnation to complete the work of his incarnation. To bring light to those in darkness, to the righteous of the Old Testament, those who long for God, and those who are saved and taken with him into paradise. His work doesn't end on this, on this, on this earth. He must continue. If you look closely at the resurrection, the icon of the resurrection... We see a triumphant icon, the risen Christ, the risen King. And in his hands he's lifting up Adam and Eve, symbolic of all the rights of the Old Testament. Symbolic of all the people who desire the truth. He destroyed death by his death. Philippians 2, 9-11 Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every other name that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven on earth and under the earth, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Again, this kingly office of Christ. The resurrection, of course, and the ascension reflect Christ's kingship. All authority in heaven and earth have been given to me. Go, therefore, make disciples of all nations. He is king over the whole of creation, according to Ephesians chapter 1, verses 20 through 23, and Philippians 2, 10 through 11. After the resurrection, he spent 40 days organizing his kingdom on earth, the church. And then he ascended into heaven, from where he still reigns over us through the grace and presence of the Holy Spirit. The character of this kingdom in Christ is spiritual and moral. It is not of this world. As the Trubican sings, let us lay aside all worldly cares and receive the King of all. So, how do we receive the King of all? We lay aside worldly cares because his kingdom is not of this fallen world. This is part of the effort of us as Christians. As the head of the church, he governs his people, he governs his people, and he's present in the church in the Holy Spirit. He teaches his people with the heavenly truth, he sanctifies them through the mysteries and sacraments of the church through the grace and descent of the Holy Spirit. The bread and wine through the grace of the Holy Spirit becomes the body and blood of Jesus Christ, and that becomes the presence of Christ. Holy Spirit is here to preserve and keep Christ with us. The kingdom of God is a life in the presence of God. God comes through, through Christ and the Holy Spirit. He comes to us through the grace of the Holy Spirit. And we go through the Holy Spirit to Christ and to God. St. Paul says no one confesses Christ but by the Holy Spirit. Christ tells us no one comes to God the Father but through him. So our salvation is Trinitarian. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. We now live in a new era. 
the kingdom of God. It is here, maybe not fully, but the kingdom of God is here. The church is the kingdom of God, and yet we still pray, Thy kingdom come. That it will fully come. This idea is what is called the now and not yet. With Christ's incarnation, he comes into the world. As priest and king and prophet, he gives us everything we need to experience and know and live in the kingdom. But it is not fully here until his second coming. When the consummation of all things will take place. That's why in some of St. Paul's uh, letters, he concludes with the word Maratha, come Lord. He doesn't want to wait. He wants it to happen now. Come now, Lord. Let's finish it up. Let's get it all together. The kingdom of God is not hidden. The Lord is with us, maybe not by sight, but of course by faith. So we are always of good courage. We know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord, for we walk by faith, not by sight. 2 Corinthians 5, 6 through 7. The life eternal we expect to come in its fullness at his second coming. Now we experience his kingdom in a mystical way in the life of the church. When he comes, we will live in a new heaven and a new earth. Then God will be everything to everyone. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 24 through 25. So as we reflect upon the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and we think about the Magi, their, goals, their gifts of gold and frankincense of myrrh, let us also think of the fact that these gifts are symbols of the priestly, kingly, and prophetic office of Jesus Christ. And that in that, they are already beginning to preach the message of salvation, the message of his kingdom, the message of his salvation, and the message of his love. Thank you.